to today's video. Um, today I'm going to play around with the Titanium White from the brush and pencil line, um, as well with the touch-up texture and the powder blender again. So I hope you enjoy this video. Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how you use the colored pencil Titanium White from brush and pencil and the colored pencil text-up texture along with it. Um, aside from that, I'll also go experiment a bit with the Titanium White in other ways to use it, if that works, I don't know, but if it does, then it's cool, because then you don't necessarily need this. But before you're gonna start, you need to mix or shake this bottle up. Shake just long enough that all this white stuff on the bottom is gone. So. You're just gonna keep shaking it. As you can see, the bottom is now clear. So, it's good to use. Um, so, you just wanna get a wee bit in your palette somewhere. Not too much, you don't need a whole lot. Oops, there you go. You probably don't see it because it is transparent, but oh well, I'll just try and zoom in a little. So I put it in there. And now you want to put in some of this powder. Okay. Let's try and put some in here. Let's see how that works. Uh, taking a brush and you're just gonna mix this whole thing up. If there's a little too little of one thing you can add. You can always add, but I don't know. I just think if the ratio is uh, more powder than the liquid, then I guess it should be good. Otherwise it might become a bit too transparent. Okay, I think I've got this mixed up. Uh, so I want to get a fine brush here. You see, got a rigger brush. And I'll zoom out. Because I'm going to actually do it on a piece I'm finishing right now. So I already tried doing some white highlights with the pencils. But that didn't come out as white as I wanted it. So with this stuff you can get super white highlights as you can see. And because you mix it with the text. Um, touch up texture you can draw over it again with pencil once it's dry because it gives an extra bit of texture um, so yeah you can tell it's much brighter so let's do a bit of whisker here stuff is really super duper white I love it And you can get super fine detail with it as well if you use a fine brush and not too much water to wet your brush with and it works wonderfully. It's hard to get as white as this with a regular white color pencil. No matter how good the pencil is, it's going to be hard. Um, let's put some whiskers on the other side. It's starting to dry, so I'll have to scoop up a little bit more. So if one of 
those lines isn't to your liking, too fat or whatever, you can always go back in and adjust it later once it's dry. Because of the texture. Touch, touch up texture. Because usually my hands aren't very steady when I'm doing fine lines like this. And also I've used pan pastel as the first layer so that kind of reacts dry when you try to put on a wet media over it. But it'll work out with a bit of patience. I've done this piece with Pan Pastel on UART 800 paper and the final layers in detailing with colored pencil. I could have done everything with colored pencil but well because the, it's sanded paper it's super rough and it eats away at your pencil so badly I wanted to save my pencils a bit and just use uh, pastel instead for the first layers to block in the color. It works a bit faster that way as well. But yeah, I mainly did it to spare my pencils a bit. Because it hurts when your pencil just grows small so fast on these kind of papers. Well, like if you use colored pencil on a paper like Smooth Bristol, it hardly wears out. So yeah, there's a huge difference. And every kind of paper works differently and yeah, to each their own. Some people, they prefer this kind of paper, other people prefer the other kind of paper and well, like recently I tried Suede Mud Board and I hated it. I just did not enjoy it at all. So. I gave up. I tried it with color pencil and I've tried it with pastels and with both I just did not like it. So no more suede and mud board for me. Nope. I guess here the lines got darker because maybe I've put too much water on my pencil and because I guess the pastel layer underneath interferes with it. Um, but then again, you don't need everything to be bright white because that looks kind of weird too. Okay, just a wee bit more there above the eye because you can hardly see them. Um, Of course, I'm going to adjust this a bit more later because like these, these ends are a bit too stark. I just want to make them fade into the picture. So yeah, that's basically how you use the powder, the titanium white, titanium white powder uh, together with the touch of texture. And the result is amazing because you get really pure white, super opaque well, sort of ink, actually, I think it is very close to the Dr. P.H. Martin pen white that I use and which I really love a lot. So because I was curious, I tried a couple of mediums to mix the titanium white powder with. Um, of course, your first, first choice is to use the brush and pencil color pencil text up texture. Um, here I've got a black cardstock with a couple of samples that I made. Uh, the first one is with the touch up text up texture touch up texture from brush and pencil. Um, for the second sample, I've used 
gummy arabic mm, this particular one is from schminke but they come in various brands um, basically gummy arabic is the binding middle that is used to create watercolor pens with um, so yes um, as you can see it is quite opaque almost as opaque as with the touch up texture um, a bit more patchy I'd say and I'd have to go over it two times to get it this white but it works and um, the good thing about mixing it with gummy arabic is that you don't have the to raise against the clock because touch up texture it can be re-wetted to some degree I tried it here on the palette but it will never be as white when it is a fresh mixture so with gummy arabic you can use your last leftovers better as with the touch up texture the mixture that dried up cannot really be used anymore um, then the third sample I mixed the titanium white with a gel medium in this case I used Art Basics from um, Prima I think it was and is basically just a acrylic soft gel and if you mix it with any kind of pigments then you get some sort of acrylic paint effect. It is even much closer to the touch up texture sample than the gummy arabic one. Um, but then again, if it dries up, you cannot use it anymore. Uh, the fourth sample, I just mixed the powder with just plain water, nothing else. Um, it kind of works, but the downside to it is that it isn't permanent. You have to fix it down because the powder comes off. And same story for the fifth sample by using it just dry with a sponge applicator. This way it just becomes like pastel. But that can have its uses. Like if you want some softer um, highlights in your piece instead of the harsh sharp details so yes it is possible to mix your titanium white with different kind of mediums i'm kind of curious uh, to see if you can re-wet anything just to go all through um, as you can see the the tux, touch up texture it does re-wet a little bit but not crazily much. Um, just as I said on the palette, I rewetted it as well and it revived a little, but you can't get it as vivid as it was. Um, so the gummy arabic should be revived. Yep, because that's watercolor and it and it just revives. Um, so. That was kind of obvious. The gel medium, that one shouldn't, if I'm correct. Nope, this one is truly permanent, it doesn't re revive. Now, the water one will, of course, revive because the powder is just on the paper, with because it's not, it's just laying on the paper, it's not fixed with a, a binding medium or anything. And of course the, the dry will also revive. So yeah, pretty much everything will revive except for the gel medium and well, the touch of texture won't revive that much. It's only a wee bit. Um, now let's see how well it takes color pencil. The first one should be able to do it because it was made for color pencil, the touch up texture. And as you can see, it works. It just gives you a whole new layer to work on. Because the stuff is slightly textured. So as you can see, you can go over it 
can cre create some layers which is really nice you now the gummy arabic I guess it should work but a bit differently it's a whole lot smoother than the top touch up texture and it, you can't get a nice saturation on this so if you're planning to go over the bit that you made white again then yeah definitely go for this one uh, the gel medium that works kind of nice but yet not as nice as the intended medium for it I'd say it's somewhere in between the touch-up texture and the gummy arabic but it isn't bad and I tried before to use colored pencil over acrylics and that worked so no surprise there well over water I guess it doesn't work hardly works as you can see you can get a faint color over it, but that's that's it and well over the dry it should basically work because the tooth of the paper is still there and it does as you can see so yeah I don't know I just thought I'd do a couple of tests to see if it works and might be interesting to anyone else out there so yeah I'd say the intended product, the touch-up texture, works the best for getting the strongest highlights and if you want to go over it with the color pencil again um, I guess my second favorite would be the gel medium because it is almost as as white as with the touch-up texture and you can to some degree go over it with color pencil um, the gummy arabic is almost as white as the touch-up texture in the gel medium but it needs a couple of layers and is still kind of patchy and with color pencil on top of it just doesn't really work that well so the only benefit is that it can be re-wetted every single time um, the mixing with water nah it isn't that great and uh, the dry the dry application it can have its uses if you want to have some soft highlights or anything like that. Anyway, let's move on to the real tutorial now. I start off by applying a layer of the powder blender onto my working surface before I apply my layers of color pencil. This will allow the pigment particles to move around freely and act like soft pastels. Then I start by applying my white layers first such as the fur and highlights. Because there is a lot of white in this piece, I chose to work on a toned work surface. The paper I'm using for this one is Pastel Mud from Claire Fontaine. Pastel Mud become, became one of my favorite papers for color pencil and pastels as it accepts many layers and allows you to work fairly fast. Also, its texture gives an extra soft effect. And because of it, it's amazing to use when drawing furry subjects. For the first layer I used a white polychromos because the polychromos pencils by Faber Castell move around the easiest when used with the powder blender as it is an oil-based pencil and is a lot drier than wax-based pencils which tend to grab onto the paper tooth. So the first layer will act like a dry lubricant after this layer I used a white luminance pencil which is wax based to pronounce the brighter areas. Don't forget to spray with the textured fixative by the brush and pencil in between each powder blender layer to get the best saturation in the end. Then I come back in with various hues of browns and indigo dark to block in the shadows on the white facial markings. The background for this piece will stay fairly simple as it will be just black. The main focus for this piece will be on the blown out cat portrait. Yet it will require some layering to get a nice deep blackish sort of color. Of course you can use just a black pencil but it will not give you the same result as it will just look kind of dead and flat. Um, 
but you get a nice deep black by just mixing uh, a color like Indian red with a halo blue reddish color and do this a couple of layers while blending each layer with the powder blender and fixate these layers each time in between. Once the background is dark enough, I go back and block in the brown fur of the cat with a green gold color. Then glaze Indian red and halo blue reddish again on top straight away and eventually blend the colors with the powder blender and repeat the same mixture on the other part of the face. Once you've, mixed, once you've fixed a layer with the textured fixative, you must allow that layer to dry for at least 15 minutes and before you use the spray, you must shake it for about 30 seconds. Then I block in the neck fur in the same way as I did the face, but adding clumps of shadows to give the illusion of long thick fur. Also, I blocked in the eyes and the tongue and added more blue hues on the white fur of the cat for a better contrast. Now I'm going back in with very dark colors such as sepia and indigo blue to darken up the eyelids, lips and markings in the fur. Because this being textured paper and because you can add even more texture with the textured spray, you will be able to draw with light colors over dark colors easily. Something that can't be really done on normal or watercolor papers. So you don't have to worry too much about your lighter details this way. It's almost like working with opaque mediums with these materials. As you can see here, I can draw fine individual hairs with a white prismacolor on top of the fixed dark layers with ease. And they show up very vivid and clear. To some degree, you would be able to do this on sanded paper without a textured fixative, as long as you reduce tooth saturation. But with the spray, you don't have to worry about it. Once your tooth won't take any more, you just create a new layer with the textured fixative. Do note that the powder blender and the tex textured fixative only work on non-absorbent surfaces. Just look at the amazing detail you can get this way, even on a small size piece like this one. To detail the brown parts of the fur, I use a dark indigo pencil and draw a dot kind of pattern to create the illusion of short fur texture, while on the white fur, I drew short fine lines to get a soft looking kind of fur texture. Where the fur gets longer, you just draw bigger lumps instead of a lot of individual lines and add just a couple of strands here and there for the most re realistic effect. When drawing shadows in white fur, I like to use colors from the background and or foreground. White is very reflective, so a white subject's hardly ever just pure white. Adding colors from the subject's surroundings into the subject itself makes it part of its surroundings and will make your piece much more realistic. In this piece, the background is black, but I used a red and blue tone to create that color, so it works to bring those colors back into the cat to keep the colors in harmony. While most of the finer details are done, I go back in with blue and red colors to hype up the contrast mainly in the white parts of the cat. Then I add details in the tone by drawing veins and such. Because most of the cat's colors are quite muted, I wanted to make at least the tongue and the eyes pop. So I'm using much brighter colors such as red and magentas on the tongue. I really want the tongue and the eyes to attract the viewer too. To add a bit more punch to the brightest parts in the white fur, I took the titanium white and used it as a pastel by applying it dry with a makeup applicator, where I wanted the whites to pop. By applying it dry, you get a nice soft looking highlight that isn't too stark and has no hard edges. Perfect to use on soft textures like fur. Then I put in the details of the eyes, again using stronger colors to make them pop. Then I use a mixture of the titanium white and touch up texture to paint in the eyes highlights and the whiskers. So we are at the end of the video. If you want to know more about the powder blender, check the link in my description to check out the video of the 
um, review I was doing of the product. I hope you're enjoying this video and it was helpful. Please leave me a like if you did and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my future videos. As always, feel free to leave a comment or feedback in the comment section and I hope to see you all back in the next video. As always, thank you for watching and have a good one!